What's up, guys? Crest for one seven here. And today, I'm teaching my girlfriend, Lindsay, how to build a computer. And here we go. Okay, guys. So what we got for uh, Lindsay's computer build here? Now, this is kind of a budget build. She's not gonna be playing lots of games that require super duper graphics. So this is more like a a six or seven hundred dollar gaming computer build. She was uh, um at first she was looking into buying the Alienware X fifty one, which is about seven hundred dollars for its lowest SKU. But we eventually just decided that we'll just build a computer cheaper that's probably going to be better now we have all the components except for the video card and the OS still waiting on that to come in so we just decided to go ahead and build the rest of it today though and I'm going to go over what we have here and this we spent about four she spent about four hundred dollars on what we have here so like I said it's probably going to be in about six hundred six hundred fifty dollar computer build so it'll be pretty decent for what she wants to do. She likes playing games like Diablo 3 and World of Warcraft, stuff like that. Nothing that's really super graphically intensive. But uh, let me just go over stuff. Now keep in mind she did save money on RAM because I, I'm giving her my old G-Skill 8 gigs. And that's about 50 bucks she saved right there. Um, Moving on. Got AMD processor. This is gonna be a complete AMD build. The video card she's getting is a 7850, uh, Radeon AC 7850. So this whole build is gonna be pretty much AMD. This is the AMD Phenom 2 Black Edition multi-core processor. It's quad-core processor. I think it's 3.4 gigahertz, but uh, I'm not sure. I can't remember. That's about 100 bucks. I just got a Seagate Barracuda 500 gig hard drive. It's a uh, 7200 RPMs. That'd be plenty for her. Uh, power supply is 530 watt, fully modular. It's a uh, Raid Max. Um, 530 watt would be plenty of power for what she's going to be running. So, uh, yeah, got that pretty cheap. Motherboard is ASRock 970 Pro 3. Uh, also, got this motherboard for a pretty good price. And it definitely uh, it has everything she needs. It's got two slots for graphics cards. It's got USB 3.0 ports. Uh, it's got SATA 6 gigabyte per second ports. So it's got everything you need. Got her two of these Rosewell Ultra Quiet Blue LED fans. I already did a video on those, so if you want a more in depth look at those, you can watch that. Along with the uh, Logisys 8 mil or 8 inch um, cold cathode lights. Did a video on that too. Just got a, her a, a DVD burner. It's like 15 bucks. They're pretty cheap. Don't really need them that much, but need it to put the OS on. Then I also did a video of her case. This is the uh, Phantom 410 mid tower. I did a pretty in depth review of that. So if you want to watch the video to know more about that, you can. But uh, we're going to be moving on to the build. And what I'm actually going to be doing is having her build a computer. I'm going to be teaching her how to do it step at a time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just be recording. So uh, she's getting ready to get to work here. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is go ahead and get the power supply put in the case. So, uh, go ahead and pull the power supply out of there. We won't need any of the cables right now, just that itself. Uh, it's got some cables hooked onto it, so it's not fully modular, but mostly modular. I like mine. Set this box aside for now. Okay, so the fan will go to the bottom. As you see, there is a vent here for it. And the power supply will go up against here with this sticking out of the case in the back. So you want to slide it in. Upside down? Mm-hmm. And then I can't see. Yeah, I know. But uh, I'll slide it in. And you'll see here on the back. There should be screw holes that line up here. And 
And here's your screws. Alright, so that's it for the power supply. Alright, so next we're going to insert the DVD drive or also known as optical drive. So go ahead and pull it out of its plastic package here. Now, you push in the right side of that panel and it'll pop open. Very right side of it. <laughs> there you go. Alright, now you're going to pull this tab to get that out. And that just comes out. Yeah, it comes out. And then the DVD drive slides in there. It should be flush with those other red pieces. Okay, that's it for that now. So you just close that, click it in, it stays. Next up is the motherboard. Okay, next up is the motherboard. This is one of the most important pieces of the computer. Just be very careful. Now the, the instructions manual you're going to want to keep somewhere beside you because you're going to be referring to that a lot. Put this off the side, you'll need that. The motherboard itself is wrapped in an anti-static bag. You do not want to lay the motherboard onto the anti-static bag though once you pull it out because the outside of the bag can cause static. It just keeps static out of the inside. So what you're going to do is we're just going to set the motherboard onto the box once you pull out of the bag. Be very careful with the motherboard. There's lots of breakable pieces. Something everybody needs to keep in mind while building computers too is that you need to make sure you keep yourself grounded. If you constantly keep a lot of static electricity, that could fry parts of the motherboard or other mm -hmm. components in the computer. So, and fry you. no. <laughs> All right, so here's the motherboard. And the first thing we want to do is install the processor. Oh. Okay, when it comes to the processor, this part is very delicate. On to, on the processor, there are a lot of little gold pins that go inside all these little holes on the motherboard. If you bend one of those pins, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. The whole computer won't work. So you got to be very careful when you pull the processor out. So uh, go ahead and start. Oh, now I can. I'm going to break it. <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah. Remember the button. Yeah, you can just leave it open for now. Just be careful. This is a spare part. That's the processor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's inside here is probably the heat sink fan, which we'll put on after the processor. Oh, goodness. Alright, so before you open this up, mm -hmm. these are those little pins I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. They cannot be bent, so you're going to have to hold the processor on the sides, the chip. Okay. Now let's look at this. Somewhere on here should be an arrow. See this golden arrow? Yeah. That needs to line up Golden. with this arrow on here. It's on the corner. Uh. It needs to line up. You'll also tell by the pins, see how these little spots are. So it's, it has to go like this. Now go ahead and right. take this bar and pull that out. Just slightly uh. nudge it to the this side and then pull it out. That's what will snap the processor yeah. into place. Those gold pins will go down and what you're going to want to do is say you're holding it on the sides. You don't want to put any pressure. You just kind of lightly just lay it on there and then we'll pin it down. Oh, this part is very delicate. You know. uh, that looks right. Yep. Wait, what do I do now? Hold it flat and just gently lay it down on there. Don't put any pressure on it. Yes, you can.
They're not lined up. There you go. Now, we push that bar back down and put it in this place. There you go. <laughs> And that's the processor. Once you get that done, you're pretty much home free. Not really, there's still a lot to do, but that was the hardest part. Okay, what we're doing right now is putting the heat sink on. Um, I've never done a heat sink like this, so I just kind of sat it on there. And, uh, yeah, it just went right into place pretty much. There's a few tabs here that have to go in. Alright, well... I had to put the heat sink fan on because I'd never done it before and I was just kind of testing it out and uh, the thermal paste that was pre-applied kind of sucked through the chip and uh, we couldn't get it back off really without messing that up. So what we did was had to hook it in. I'm not even exactly sure it's on the right side but there's not really much way to change it now. It was a pretty tight fit. Now this, this is your plug for that. We need to look for CPU fan right here. That's where it plugs in now. Notice there's a tab on there. One and two. You want to do one. That black tab lines up with that. And there you go. That's your CPU and heat seal fan. That was a relatively easy heat sink fan install. We'll do something with that cable later. Next will be the RAM. Where's the RAM? Grab those. And actually we're going to have to take a minute to refer to the guide here. Um, when it comes to dual channel RAM, you want to refer to your motherboard's guide because there are certain channels it needs to go in for that dual channel to work properly so we're gonna take a quick look at that and figure it out and then we'll be right back all right so it's just as I figured but basically for the dual channel of this RAM to work you'll want it in A1 and B1 which you if my phone will focus it shows it right there so you'll either want it in these two slots or these two slots you can choose whichever to install it you'll no, I would go with these two just because they're further away from that fan. To install them, you want to, before you undo the tabs on both sides of the ones you want to stick them in. They, they come down this way. Now notice on the RAM itself, there's a notch. Which needs to line up with this notch in here. Mm-hmm. So you want to turn the other way, yep. Now do the inside one first to give you more room for the outside one. You want to line it up and push it down until those tabs pop back up. Push it down. <laughs> there you go. Takes a little force sometimes, but just be careful. And there you go. That's how you install the RAM. Now, time for the fun part of putting this motherboard into the actual case itself. Okay, so to get the motherboard into the case, what we need to do is look at where all these holes are in the motherboard. There's seven on this one, and then you need to figure out, consult your guide for your motherboard or your case, and figure out where you need to put something that's called standoffs, which are these right here. Now they keep the motherboard off the actual metal of the case and create ground points to keep it from keep it grounded and from short circuiting. So we're going to put the standoffs in, and then place the motherboard in. We're also going to Take the motherboard tray and insert it into the back of the case. Okay, so we have all the standoffs in place. We also have the motherboard tray in. It just pops in pretty easy. 
so now is the fun part of getting the motherboard into place. So what I would do if I was you, <laughs> see the grip out on the sides, or maybe put one hand with this. You don't want to put a lot of pressure on that, but and what you're going to do is line those holes up in the uh, ports on the back within the case, and it'll just lay on top of those standoffs. I already touched the middle, does that mean? That's fine. Now it's spiky underneath. Not really. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Alright, it needs to come this way a little bit. Do you, do you see it line, the holes lining up with those standoffs? There mm -hmm. you go. Getting there. Yeah, the holes are lined up. Alright, so now we'll take screws, put them where those holes are with the standoffs. They go into the standoffs. You don't want to over tighten them too much. And you definitely don't want those cables in that pan either. But we'll do that in just a second. So let's get the screws and tighten down the motherboard. Okay, we got our uh, motherboard in. Put the screws into the standoff so it is secure. And next, we're going to move on to putting in the hard drive. So, Lindsay, if you want to grab that. Um, Should be in a non static bag somewhere. Anti static. What's that? Cable. Okay. Do I have to be really careful with this one? Too? Not like ultra careful. It's not as fragile as other stuff. <laughs> Choose any one of these drive bays. Looks like gum. No, oh, no, I wouldn't rub it. But... Choose any one of these. And then pull the tabs and pull the tray out. Okay. Now, if I'm correct, this should line up somewhere with the screws that are already in. No, the other way. Flip around. But it should just fit right into the tray. With the screws, it should be a kind of a screwless design there. Alright, so got the hard drive in the, the little tray there. You want to flip it over and put it back in. Um, this tray was not a great design by NZXT. Uh, it was definitely a little more difficult than it probably should have been. Now, there may be an easier way to do it, but it, seemed, it just took us a little while to get it in. But uh, needless to say, we got it. So uh, that's pretty much all the main components in. At this point, we're going to put some fans in, and then we are going to move on to the wire management. So, let's start with the fans. Alright, so right now we're just switching around some fans. Uh, we took the front cover off of the case, and Lindsay's going to move this fan up so we can get a blue LED one here. There's already a blue LED fan on top, and we're probably going to put a blue LED fan on the side of the case right there. So uh, that's what we're going to be working on now. And after that, we're going to get these lights installed, which is just as simple as slapping some Velcro on it and sticking it somewhere. And then it's all cable management now. While Lindsay's doing this, I'll kind of explain it to you guys. Here, power supply is going to have a few cables, 24 pin, which is going to go up here, and an 8 pin, which goes on your motherboard as well, or 4 pin. That's taping. Yeah. And then you're going to have to run power cables to your hard drive, your optical drive, your video card once you have it. Uh, you can run your fans to the power supply, but you don't really have to. They can plug into the motherboard. And uh, yeah, so uh, having a modu modular power supply makes it kind of nice to 
where you only have to <laughs> put in the cables that you actually need. But uh, yeah, we're going to be working on that here for a little bit and we'll get back to you guys when we're done. Alright, I don't know if you can see that, but we got one of the fans put in there. We moved the, fan, the stock fan up so that there's a blue LED fan there. We put a blue LED fan on the side of the computer. And now, Lindsay's unboxing her cold cathode lights. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, he got the milk. <laughs> Try to push it out to where like it's right up against the case and can't go any further. I don't see what. It's the one that was all the way to the left. Oh. Okay. This is how we do it. Hey, something over here says USB 3.0. It does? Is that talking about that? Uh huh. I think so. Dang it. Right, now the trick is. I got one that says HDD LED. And it looks like that. Oh, I got it. <clears throat> now we need the SATA cables. Look in the, uh, the motherboard box. Uh. Alright guys, well we just got done with the uh, cable management. What we got here on the back is just a mess of cables. But uh, basically what you want to do here is just zip tie everything down wherever you can. Um, this side doesn't really need to look good because you're not going to see it. Once that panel goes on, you're not going to see anything back there. It just needs to be zip tied down so that the panel can actually close. So yeah, that looks like a mess right now. This side, however, looks pretty good. Uh, did my best to route the cables through here where you can't see them. Um, did a pretty decent job, I think. Um, we got a graphics card that is going to go there eventually. And uh, this red cable here will be what runs to that. And uh, yeah, should be pretty uh, cool once it's all done. But we're, we got all the fans and lights hooked in, so we're going to go ahead and put it all back together and uh, see what this thing looks like booted up. Cross our fingers. Alright. It's all put back together. And I know there's a superstition about if you put the side panel back on, something's going to go wrong. But, uh, oh well, we're going to find out. So, uh, here goes nothing. Looky there. Those lights aren't working, but there they go. There are lights in that one. Yeah. yeah. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Can we turn the Nice. Here's a look at it with my uh, phone light off. <laughs> See how it looks on the inside? Need another fan right there. I don't really like that hole right there. Looking good though. Now we just need a video card and a operating system. We'll be good to get. And uh, that's it for uh, our first computer build. Want to put that switch on? 
Yeah. What do you think? I like it. <laughs> <laughs> did a good job. Thanks. You built. I'd say you did like at least eighty percent of it. Minus all the cable management, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the red and blue color scheme. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you later.